there's nothing more alarming than ventilator alarms. So let's talk about them. There are a few different types of alarms on ventilators, but the main two ones that I'm going to talk about are high pressure alarms and low pressure alarms. This PDF is taken from my ICU crash course, and I talk about all this stuff in greater detail, but I'm going to talk a little bit about it right now. For your high pressure alarms, these alarms will either say like high pressure or peak airway pressure or maximum pressure, something along those lines. These types of alarms are caused by resistance either from the patient or in the ventilator circuit somewhere, whether that's the ventilator tubing or the patient's ET tube. Anything that causes the ventilator to have to like push more pressure into the ventilator circuit and ET tube because it's trying to overcome some sort of resistance is going to cause these alarms. Main things are things like secretions. You have like a bunch of secretions in there. You have a kink in your circuit, uh, poor lung compliance, meaning that the patient maybe has smoked for a long, 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 long time and their lungs don't stretch the same way that your lungs and eyes lungs probably do. Um, coughing, biting can also cause high pressure alarms. So the fix for these alarms is going to be dependent on what's actually causing it. And sometimes you have to troubleshoot and go through X, Y, and Z in order to figure it out. There's lots of secretions in there. You're in a suction, your patient. If your patient is coughing, 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 coughing constantly, and it's causing alarms and poor compliance in the ventilator and desatting, they might need more sedation. If they're biting the tube, they might need a bite block. If there's a kink in the tube or the ventilator circuit. You're gonna have to look for that and unkink it. And then if they have poor lung compliance, this is a whole nother topic that we can talk about, but you may need to switch to a different ventilator mode. Low pressure alarms, on the other hand, are caused by a disconnect in the circuit. That's pretty much the only thing that will cause a low pressure alarm. Um, and all you have to do is literally reconnect it. Let's find where the leak is and reconnect it. Now there's a lot of parts on a ventilator that connect. You have your ET tube, the ventilator circuit connects there. Um, there's usually a blue and uh, white or clear-ish tubing that are connected to the ventilator to the ET tube. And so sometimes one of those can come off. Sometimes it's the filter at the ventilator. So backtrack, start at the patient and work your way down the ventilator circuit and you'll find what's disconnected. And that's my two cents on ventilator alarms. If you have any questions, let me know.